how are you doing today? I hope that you are doing amazing and fantastic and wonderful. So, it's March. Can't believe it's March because February was a cluster. Like the first two weeks of February, we had to work from home because of ice storms and snowstorms because we're in Oklahoma and that just happens. And then the last two weeks of February, I also had to work from home a few days because our son's daycare had pipes burst and um, they couldn't open the school. So one week Aaron took three days off and I took two days off and then the next week I took three days off and he took two days off to sort of balance it and everything. And so that was interesting. But on Monday, this coming Monday, he is going to school because they're open. So. Hopefully that'll put him back on a good schedule because right now like his nap schedule and everything like that is sort of very wonky. So fingers crossed that uh, he gets sort of back into the rhythm of, of things. So that's sort of a little life update. Uh, today's video is all about what I read in the month of February. So I had a pretty good uh, February month of reading. Like I liked most of the books that I read and um, I think that I did a good sort of like balancing of uh, different types of books, different genres, written by men, written by females, backlists, new, um, new books and things like that. So let's get started the first book that i read was the lost world by michael crichton and i i loved this book guys it was so good um i gave it a five out of five stars it's the second book that comes after jurassic park and you guys know that i read jurassic park last month and i really 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 enjoyed it i really enjoyed getting to know um, some of the other characters a little bit more and um, it is vastly different from the movie so like the movie you've got Malcolm who is and if this is spoiling anybody anything for anybody I'm sorry it came out in like the 90s 2000s guys so hopefully I'm not spoiling too much for you but um, the difference is that like there were two kids in the book and they weren't related to Malcolm at all. They were like his like assistants or whatever. And versus the movie, they made Malcolm like have a child, like a love child and different things like that. And um, one of the scenes that I really, really enjoyed from the book and the movie was when the T-Rex is kind of like pushing the, the van or like the uh, mobile home on the edge of the cliff. That was just as intense in the book as it was in the movie. So I really enjoyed that. I was um, sort of on a Michael Crichton kick. And so then I read Prey. And I gave Prey three stars. So Prey is, it follows this dad who lost his job. And so he's sort of become this stay at home dad for his three kids while his wife is working. And his wife's job is, she's supposed to be like this PR kind of person for businesses, but then she accepts a position as like VP of like this science lab where they're trying to basically, um, create nano like particles and like nanite nanites kind of um i don't know what word i'm looking for uh like the ones that can sort of like go and fix like valves and hearts and things like that um but they accidentally uh make something a little bit more dangerous than that and it was good but it was not i don't know i think that it was kind of rushed. The characters, there wasn't really any likable characters other than the dad. Um, as a mom, I really, really, really wanted to punch the, the mom in the face. It made more sense at, towards the end of the book. But um, yeah, so I read Prey. Then I read London Lovett's newest book in her Firefly Junction series, and that is A Crafty Killing. And I really did enjoy that. I gave it a four out of five stars. I love the fact that uh, she's giving, hello Cleo. She's giving her, her, her main character, Sunny, a little bit more of, um, I would say, like, 
problem uh, when it comes to like her job and as a journalist and trying to build her bed and breakfast. And so um, Firefly Junction has been bought by a wealthy um, woman and is being vastly changed and not for the better in Sunny's terms. And she has been thrown all of these fluff pieces because she's not gonna be there very long anyway, says the new owner. And um, she stumbles upon a murder at the craft fair and she's trying to be told not to um, investigate that that'll be the other lead detectives uh, or the lead reporters, um, you know, that's their job. And so um, I love that uh, you get to see Sunny grow a little bit and have a little bit more um, sort of pushback. Uh, I, I, I think I, I really like that. I, I enjoyed the book quite a bit. So um, you guys should go and check it out. The next book I read was Dear Fahrenheit 451 by Anne Spence. So this is a nonfiction book. It, Anne Spence is a librarian and has been for years and years and years. And this is her writing, um, writing letters to her favorite books, books she hates, books she wishes weren't popular. Um, it was hilarious and I got a ton of books like added to my TBR. It was absolutely amazing. I um, checked it out from the library um, on my Libby app and I, I loved it so much. I actually checked out The Lost World and Prey on the Libby app as well. So yay me for not spending any extra money and London Love It actually sent me the arc of a crafty killing. So, so far, four to four, I had not spent uh, extra money for. And, and then I break that with this next book. Uh, the next book is Murder in the Margins by uh, Margaret Loudon. I think that's how you say it. And this was the Cozy Escape Book Club Book of the Month. I gave it a two stars. It had a really, really, really good premise where the main character, um, her name is Penelope. Yes, they call her Pen. Um, she is an author, a best-selling author of one book in the United States, and she's having a hard time um, really getting motivation to write her second book. And so she fills out this application to sort of become a resident writer at this bookshop in um, England. And she gets it, and it sounds super cool, and all of this stuff. Um, she sort of hosts books clubs and writing clubs and different things like that it sort of seems like like it's like a barter kind of system um because she like gets this house and this cute little cottage and she has her cat and everything and like it sounds like it's perfect like it's going to be an amazing cozy except that the characters were they, none of them were really really likable in my opinion or they weren't really fleshed out um you didn't get a lot of red herrings or clues really on the who done it or like why and so i figured out the who done it towards the end but it was sort of it felt really 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 rushed and the pen didn't really seem like she was trying to figure it out and it didn't make sense as to why she was trying to figure it out um, they tried to make it seem as though another character asking her for her help, uh, made her, you know, more invested, but she wasn't really even really close to that character who asked her to, uh, look into the murder. So it was just kind of like, eh, like I didn't, I didn't love it. It was, it was okay. I'm not going to continue on the series though. And then last but certainly not least is, um, I did purchase this. Uh, it's actually, do I have it in here? No, I do not have it in here. I guess it's out in the living room. But it is um, the case of the missing Marquise. I think that's how you say it, or Marquez. Um, this is the first in the Anolia Holmes uh, series by um, Nancy Springer. And guys, I gave it a four out of five stars. And it's just, it was really, really, really good. I loved her as a character, her strong personality and how much she sort of fought back with um, Sherlock and with my with Mycroft. And it was just, I really, really enjoyed it enough that um, 
I spoiler alert for the next uh, wrap up I've already finished the second book in the series and I even watched the uh, the movie and um, I really enjoyed that as well it was super good um, vastly different from the book not like vastly vastly different but it seems as though like maybe they tied some things from n books in the later of the series into the movie so maybe i just got spoiled on things because there's five books in the series but um yeah so those were the books that i read in march um let me know what were your absolute favorite book that books that you read in march i would love to know that is the end of this chapter of Courtagonist. please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and until next time guys Happy reading. Bye.